गुड मॉर्निंग स्टूडेंट्स टूडे आवर टॉपिक इज सीपीयू शेड्यूलिंग फर्स्ट से व्हाट इज सीपीयू शेड्यूलिंग और व्हाट इज प्रोसेस शेड्यूलिंग प्रोसेस शेड्यूलिंग काम्स इन केस ऑफ मल्टी प्रोग्रामिंग एनवायरमेंट so this cpu shilling comes in case of multi programming environment next what is the objective of this scheduling the objective of this scheduling are to maximize the system throughput and be fair to all users this is the objective of the cpu scheduling or the process scheduling next we will see why the cpu scheduling comes we know that to run a program the program first must be loaded into the primary memory from the secondary memory so if it is a secondary memory next if the program is to execute that program must be brought from secondary memory to primary memory from this primary memory the short term scheduler will select a process and allocate it to the cpu and it will follow any of the four algorithm that one is fcfs sf round robin and priority so to execute a program the program must be loaded from secondary memory to primary memory from there short term scheduler will select the process and allocate the processes to the cpu by any of the four algorithm that is fcfs first come first serve shortest job first round robin and priority we will see later each one of them next the scheduling is of two types number 1 is primitive another one is non primitive what is primitive and what is non primitive next one is the difference between non primitive and primitive here is your non primitive and here is your primitive in case of non primitive once the cpu has been allocated to a process the process keeps the cpu until it releases the cpu either by terminating or switching to the waiting state so once the cpu has been allocated to a process the process keeps the cpu until it releases the cpu either by terminating or switching to the waiting state and in case of primitive here scheduler primt a process from cpu to give it to another process so this is the difference between primitive and non primitive in case of non primitive the cpu keeps busy until the process has been finished but 
in case of printing scheduling the cpu can switch from one process to another next we will see the defines with an a diagram suppose we know that this is a ready queue or this is a running this is a ready this is running state this is waiting and here is your terminated so these are the four stages or the four four state of a process ready to running running to ready running to waiting running to ready this is the process execution diagram and if we denote is that one this is denoted as two this is as three this is and four one and four is non primitive and two and three is primitive one and four means when running state to waiting state and running to terminated that will be non primitive scheduling that means cpu cannot be printed but in case of 2 and 3 the cpu can be printed so this is the difference between non primitive and primitive scheduling next we will find the different cpu scheduling criteria cpu scheduling criteria the commonly used criteria that are used in determining the scheduling policy to be followed are number 1 cpu utilization cpu utilization means keeps the cpu busy number 2 throughput throughput means number of process completed per time unit number 3 this is turn around time turn around time means completion of job minus submission of the job so this is known as turn around time or it can be stated as like that interval from the time of submission of a process to the time of completion next one is waiting waiting means waiting in the ready queue this is known as waiting time and number 5 is response time from the submission of a request until the first response is produced so these are the five size scheduling criteria next we will see here the different scheduling algorithm the first come is fcfs that means first come first serve here jobs are scheduled in the order they received point number 1 point number 2 is cpu is allocated to the process which is at the head of the ready queue so this is the fcfs scheduling algorithm but here is a convoy effect convoy effect means all process 
wait for one big process to get of the CPU. This effect result in lower CPU and device utilization. So this is the disadvantage or it can be tell as convoy effect and number two it is non preemptive. Now let us illustrate the FCFS algorithm by an example. Suppose in a system there are three process P1, P2 and P3. Here is given your arrival time, here is given your bus time. Suppose for process P1 the arrival time is 0, process P2 is arrival time is 0, process P3 arrival time is 0 and bus time for process P1 24 second, process P2 3 second and process P3 3 second. From this diagram we can see that process P1 is at the head of the radicule, next process P2, next process P3, next we will draw a nature diagram. So this will be a nature diagram. Here process P1 will be given to the CPU first. Process P1 is given at 0 and its bus time is 24. So its finish time will be 24. Next there is process P2. Process P2 start time is 24. Its bus time means its execution time. So we will add 24 and 3. We will get 27. And for process P3, we will get 27 plus 3, that means 30. So, this is the way how the FCFS ruling algorithm execute the processes. Now, we have to compute the waiting time. Waiting time for process P1 will be P1 start time is 0, arrival time is 0, so waiting time is 0. Waiting time for process P2, P2 start time is 24 and arrival time is 0, so it will be 24. Waiting time for process P3, P3 start time is 27 and arrival time is 0, so it will get 27. So we have to calculate the average waiting time. The average waiting time will be 0 plus 24 plus 27 by 3. That means we will get 17 seconds as average waiting time. Now we will see the turn around time. So Turn around time for process P1 is completion of job that means 24 minus arrival time. Turn around time for process P2 will be its completion time is 27 minus 0. And turn around time for process P3 will be 30 minus 0 that is 30 nanosecond. So we will get 24 plus 27 plus 30 divided by 3 that you call to your turn around time. So this is the average waiting time and this is the average turn around time. But here is a convoy effect. Convoy effect means all process wait for one big process to get of the CPU. Suppose there is a big process that is at the head of the radicule. So all the process wait for that big process to get of the CPU. This effect result in lower CPU and device utilization. That is all about first come first serve algorithm. Now the next ruling algorithm that is called SJF. In this algorithm the job with the shortest expected processing time is selected. 
that means the job with the shortest bus time is selected first it is of two types non primitive and primitive non primitive means once cpu given to the process it cannot be printed until its completion but in case of primitive if a new process arrives with cpu burst length less than remaining time remaining time of current executing process then print this scheme is known as srtf that means shortest remaining time fast this sjf is optimal because it gives the minimum average waiting time it is very difficult is knowing the length of the next cpu burst we may predict the value by the following algorithm that is tn plus 1 equal to alpha into tn plus 1 minus alpha into tn where this small tn contain most recent information caps tn store the past history next tn plus n predict the value for the next cpu burst and there is your alpha the value of the alpha lies between 0 to 1 so this is the formula by which we can know the length of the next cpu burst now now we will see the non primitive sjf by an example suppose there are three process p1 p2 p3 and we had another process that is p4 where arrival time is given and burst time is given arrival time is 0 1 2 3 and burst time is suppose 6 3 8 7 so this is the table we have given we have to first we have to draw the nat chart so we will select the processes with minimum burst time the arrival time is zero that means there is no other process at that time so we will have to no choice to select process p1 other than any process so we will select process p1 its arrival time is zero and its burst time is 6 so 0 to 
its completion time is 6 and its start time is 0. Next, when the clock at 6, then all the process have come because all the processes arrival time is 1, 2, 3 and now the clock's time is, suppose it's 10 or 6 clock, 10.06. Process P2 comes at 10.01, process P3 comes at 10.02, process P4 comes at 10.03. Now the time of the clock is 10.06, so the process P2, P3, P4 comes. Now we can compare the bus time of among the processes. The bus time of process P2 is less, so we will select P2. We will get 6 plus 3, that means 9. Next, 7 and 8, the bus time is of process P4 is less than the bus time of process P3. So we will select process P4, we will get 16. Next, there is your P3 and we will get 16 plus 8, that means 24. Now, you, now we, we have to calculate the waiting time. So, waiting time for process P1 is start time is 0, arrival time is 0, so waiting time will be 0. Waiting time for P2 will be, P2 start time is 6, P2's arrival time is 1, so 6 minus 1 that equal to 5. Waiting time for process P3, process P3 start time is 16, arrival time is 2, so 16 minus 2 that equal to 14. And waiting time for process P4 will be, start time is 9, minus arrival time is 3, so we will get 6. So we will get the average waiting time by 0 plus 5 plus 14 plus 6 by 4 this is the average waiting time now we will have to compute the turnaround time so the turnaround time for process p1 will be its completion time that means 6 minus its arrival time is 0 so 6 turnaround time for process p2 will be p2's completion time is 9 minus arrival time is 1 so we will get 8 next turnaround time for process p3 process p3 is Completion time is 24 minus is arrival time is 3 that we get uh, uh, arrival time is 2 so we'll get 22 and process P4 turnaround time will be completion time that means 16 minus its arrival time that equal to 13 so the average turnaround time will be 6 plus 8 plus 22 plus 13 by 4 this is the average turnaround time in case of non-primitive SJF.